All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Mike Catalana, I am Jenna Cottrell. Before we get started talking all about this Bills win over the Browns <laughs> in Detroit, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Mike, it wasn't always perfect, but uh, even the Bills getting here for this game, I mean, the team talked about it afterwards. You saw the videos on social media. It was a feat in itself for the guys to get here and to even be able to play on time. Well, think about what happened during this week. And then when you hear the specific stories, Jenna, yeah. they're talking about players literally trying to walk down paths with their bags to get to somebody to take them, to get them to the airport, players getting dug out by their neighbors. I mean, they are real people who live near Orchard Park, the majority yeah. of them, and they got seven feet of snow. So think about that and then add into the next element. In the NFL, it's about practicing, being mm -hmm. sharp, doing those things. Let's be honest. Wednesday's practice was kind of lame for them. They had guys sick. They had a few guys hurt. Yeah. Josh Allen limited. Thursday they practiced, I guess, to whatever extent. And then Friday off, Saturday, just like you know, virtual practices. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. That doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And then they got here and they played. And you said it. Maybe the game was kind of like the week. Started out looking ugly, and then it got a lot better. Well, yeah, you, you talk about that. And Josh Allen, you know, those first couple of drives for this team, it was – we were all on the sidelines like, what is what is going on? Now, the offense did find a rhythm. wasn't exactly through Allen, but just to see them have – the run game kind of show up for them. What does that mean for this team? Yeah, because we'll talk a little bit about Allen in a minute because yeah. that doesn't mean everything is perfect, but in terms of that run game and this, Dan, I know you're listening. We've said it before about using the run game. Yeah. Uh, it's about helping your quarterback. Correct. There are times you need it. They need it in the red zone. It opens things up for them. Yeah. They need it when the quarterback is struggling. They need it for the offensive line. I'm sorry, you look around the league, Teams can run the football, they can, yeah. and the Bills have not been able to do it. But all of a sudden today, I got to tell you, I was impressed by James Cook. I, I thought too. he looked really good in yeah. this one, yeah. and then certainly Devin Singletary making plays. And when you have that combination going, it then opened things up. Um, last year when they got to this point, what did they start doing? Started running the ball better, yeah. and then Allen took off and played phenomenal down the stretch. Yeah, I just think it gives them another gear to go to. Mm -hmm. And again, today it kind of took some of that the weight off of Allen's shoulders when things were not going well. Some of the passes he was throwing, I mean, sailing some balls. Like he would, he I would always zoom in on him after the play, and he was you could tell he was just like, "What am I doing?" Yeah. And that, and even with Diggs, how it took so long to get him involved. Well, I don't know if you could see it on the field, but people watching at home on television saw Sean McDermott with Stefan Diggs. Yeah. In a long conversation, put his arm around him. This is in the middle of that, the late first quarter, I think it was. Yeah. They're having this conversation. I, again, are we reading into it a little bit? We never really got a chance to ask McDermott about it. I don't know if he would have told us anyhow. Yeah. But Diggs, I saw one play where Diggs was open. And Allen, who normally it's just like gear one, I'm yeah. throwing it to Diggs, yeah. didn't throw it. And Diggs didn't make some big movement, no, no. but he kind of went like this, like, yeah. I'm open. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't, it didn't happen. And you said it, Josh was sailing throws yeah. early. Again, he didn't have practice. He's not throwing a lot and yeah. all. But that play to Diggs right before the end of the half, they needed, that. They needed it so bad. I mean, we were walking up the tunnel, and I'm like, the Bills have the lead <laughs> at half. It was unbelievable just because of how crappy they played early yeah. on, how how inept the offense looked. So for them to be able to come away at the half, have a little bit of confidence, things started going together. And then, like you said, the, the run game really did just give them something else to go to. And yeah. I, I, like you said, some of the guys you were impressed by. When we're talking about defense, yeah. Matt Milano. Oh. What a player he is. We talked to Jordan Phillips. He starts his thing. He goes, first thing I want to say is Matt Milano, DPOY. Or yeah. did he say defensive player of the defensive year? Defensive player of the year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, Milano is, when he's out there, he is so impactful to them. So you got impactful. Milano back. You got Poyer, Poyer back. Yeah. Milano flew in on that sack. You know, they, they sent pressure yeah. a lot yeah. today. They did. And there was that one sack he got where they sent Taron Johnson on one side. Milano comes from the other. There were times they didn't get there. And they had the little dump off passes that worked. Yeah. But I tweeted it. He plays a violent brand of football yes. when he's out there. Yes. 
I mean, there were so many plays that I was like, and there goes Matt Milano, and just the pressure that he brings, and just what, like you said, what he does for this defense. I feel like he's not one of those guys, like if you were a, team, a fan of another team, you're not really like, oh, yeah, yeah. Matt Milano, that's a huge guy that they're going to be like looking out for. But at the same point, the plays that he comes up with, and just this, again, the safety blanket and what he can do, uh, it's just huge. And you mentioned Jordan Poyer. I just he was zipping around at warm ups yeah. and people and I tweeted it and people were like, Does he not normally run out at warm ups like that? I'm like, No 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 no. Don't don't misconstrue that. What I mean is just you could tell how excited he was yeah. to be back out there with his team and he talked about that post game. Yeah, I asked him about that because that guy has done everything possible to be on the field. He has. You know, in this case, he probably thought the strangest trip he'd have to a game was a 15-hour car ride to Kansas <laughs> City uh, each way. Good and this boy, one, yeah. you know, he's, he's he said his daughter loves the snow. He don't love the snow. You know, nice. she loves playing in it. He doesn't like that. Yeah. Like, they were happy to get out of there. But he got himself here. That elbow is in rough shape. It's I mean, gross. That's not, that's not easy. For him. Respectfully, it's gross. <laughs> yeah. And he went out there and played, and he hates missing the games. And you yes. just know, not only does he make the plays, but he brings something to this defense. Look, they got a few breaks. Browns dropped a couple balls in yeah. the end zone and all. But on the other side, before we get to, to wrapping this up, the on the other side of that, the officiating was horrendous. Yeah. Horrendous. Yeah. I cannot believe they miss the face mask call that they did. Yeah. There was even a play on the sidelines they missed. And then right away they called a holding penalty on the Bills. Yeah. I, look, I'm not saying that the Bills were getting cheated. I'm just talking about incompetence with the officials. And that rule needs to change. Yeah. When a replay shows a blatant face mask, mm -hmm. they should be able to review that and call that penalty. Yeah. It happened last week in the Eagles game. The guy gets pulled down. He ended up losing the football. Yeah. In this case, if they call that against Naeem Hines, it's a first down for the Bills. Instead, they lose, what, eight yards on yeah. the play. Yeah. Um, ridiculous couple of calls. And DeMar Hamlin, textbook, textbook defense on that play, and they called interference. That one you probably can't review unless you go yeah. down that road. Horrendous call. McDermott went up to him and he's like, next play, yeah. next play, which well, that's what you're supposed to say because yeah. you could tell how deflating it really was. Um, but speaking of this game, I mean, look, the Bills, they had two games that they had lost. Yeah. They come in here. There's a weird crap going on. They yep. get here. They don't play well to start. They figure out, oh, my God. I just walked into me saying, find a way to win. Yes. <laughs> but they did. They did. They did. And that was the thing about it. And we asked Jordan Phillips. But I like talking to him. I did too. Yeah. yeah, he was funny. By the way, he had the flu all week. So he was like, get me out of Buffalo. I don't want to play outside. I want to come inside. But he ended up doing when he, that. When he said that in the press, you, you I reacted. was like, oh. <laughs> Jenna reacted. Everybody <laughs> laughed. But it was funny. But, you know, he was talking about, you can't take wins for granted. Yeah. It's kind of like we all start doing that. We're like, oh, you look on the Bills' schedule. Yeah. They'll beat this team, that yeah. team. You see what happens around this league. And he's like, you can't take them for granted. Now, the other thing he said is, man, we left our families, left them all back there trying yeah. to dig out and all. I feel for that. You think about yourself. Yeah. Would you want to leave your family? If they're all stuck in the no. snow or something like that. No. But that's what these guys have to do. Yeah. I get it. That's their job. They got some help. But they want to get back. They want to get yeah. back, see their families, help dig out, do that. I guess they'll sort of practice for a day. I don't even know what their schedule is going to be. Don't know. They need a day off. Yes. Oddly. But they'll probably do walkthroughs. They'll probably do more of that kind of thing and get ready to come back. They are literally, it's an hour flight back to Orchard Park. And then they'll be home for... A couple yeah. days at Monday, that. Monday, Tuesday, yeah. most of the day, you know, and they'll yeah. fly back here on Wednesday afternoon and get ready for Thursday. It's a 12:30 start here. Anything they can take from this game for Thursday? I do think there is something, you know, uh, Jordan Poyer said, you know, I've probably played here six times. I yeah. get that, but he's never played here, you know, back-to-back <laughs> -back -back. back games. Yeah. And within a few days, I think – they have a good feeling. I mean, it's just like anything else. There are places teams go, they don't have a good feeling. This one, they do. Yeah. They play here. Uh, they played here in the preseason. They play here. The environment is what it is. Now they know, hey, the Lions got a big win. Yeah. You know, they beat the Giants, and they, they love Thanksgiving yeah. games here. It's a obviously a huge, huge tradition, tradition in Detroit. Yeah. The crowd was, we didn't even really talk about that. A lot of people stepped up to get here, and I know it couldn't yeah. be easy. It was definitely a pro Bills crowd. It's going to be yeah. a Lions crowd. There'll be some Bills fans here, but it'll be yeah. a Lions crowd on Thanksgiving. Absolutely. So, yes, I think they can take that. 
They were in the locker rooms. They're on that certain side of the field. They tried to replicate that. Yeah. Hey, find a way. That is so Sean McDermott for have them be in the visitor's locker room yeah. for two weeks straight or two games straight just to make sure that they feel. Now, as we're going to end this, I just want to say, everybody, I want to get going because they didn't have any food down here at all for you guys, right? At all. That's ridiculous. I mean, come on, Detroit. I know they're going to step it up on Thanksgiving. We yeah. heard Thanksgivings. You may have to come up. Well, they let her come up to the press box for it's dinner. It's Dan. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can eat at home. <laughs> that's fair. But Jenna needs. I mean, I she need needs dinner. Eat. I mean, I you, need, you need lunch and dinner. I, I couldn't even I steal had, any snacks for you. I had. <laughs> They didn't have any. Quick up story there. inside baseball. So I'm walking up the tunnel, and Mike is looking at me and like disheveled. And I was like, oh, what, "What's going on?" He's like, "I, I tried." I'm like, "What happened? <laughs> is everyone okay?" And he's like, "I tried to get you snacks. There weren't any." I, I like, did. Holy shit! I was looking around. <laughs> the level of commitment. <laughs> I almost stole some of the Bills food, but you, I've I've thought took about a Gatorade, that. Right? Allegedly. Yes, allegedly. allegedly well, Michael. Also, I am wearing a coat because it is cold because they have the door yeah. they have the doors open. Yeah, I know. So there's that. All okay. right. I just didn't want to get roasted by people. No. All right. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. For for Mike, I'm Jenna. We'll catch you next time. Please be sure to like, comment who you thought stood out on the yeah. field today for yep. the Bills. And then subscribe, as always. All right, thanks. We'll catch you in like <laughs> a day as we go get ready to come back here. All right, bye. <laughs>